What's up, Rage Nation? How's it going? This is Alex. You're watching Rage and Roll Review, and it's time for trailer reaction. The trailer that we're going to be checking out today will be the official first trailer for Jurassic World. Now, I originally thought that the trailer was supposed to come out on Thursday. At least that's what they announced. So I was actually counting down the days in anticipation for this trailer because I'm actually really really excited everybody loves dinosaurs and everybody loves Jurassic Park so this is something to be excited about well it came out two days earlier today on Tuesday and I was checking out my Facebook news feed and the Jurassic Park or rather the Jurassic World trailer all over my news feed it's just like every single page that I have liked all have tw have been tweeting and, and, and posting it so you know what here it is! It came out two days early, and I'm really, really excited to check it out. So, as a matter of fact, I've already checked it out, and I did a little bit of a reaction video for it. I'm not going to show you all two minutes and 40 seconds of my reaction. It was more along the lines of something like this. And like this. What? All right, so there's my reaction. So I, what I really want to spend the time doing on this video is reviewing this this trailer because there's actually a lot to talk about. All right, so let's just start off with uh, this shot right here. And this is where a pair of parents <laughs> say bye to the kids, telling them that, uh, you know, I'm really happy for, for you to go on this trip. And if you see anything chasing after you, run. So this kind of already gives you an idea of what's going to happen in the movie. In a way, it's kind of predictable, all right? So um, now we are treated to this shot of the ferry that takes the, the people from the mainland to Ila Nublar, all right? And I'm not sure if this is the original island or a brand new island because uh, apparently they keep on showing off brand new islands uh, in the first three <laughs> in the first three films. So I don't know if this is an, a brand new island or, or, or the existing one, all right? So you can see uh, the, the ferry going on to, it, to the island. And then here is your first shot of, uh, of, what the, of how the people feel when they see the sign for Jurassic World. <laughs> and it looks like this. And wow. They really stepped up their their game. I mean, the, look at this technology. They're on a, a a monorail system, like a like a transit system that takes them takes them through the gates of Jurassic World. It's no longer Jurassic Park; it's Jurassic World. And in the next shot, you can see this is a full on theme park. Like it's a full on theme park, complete with concession stands and bath public bathrooms and gift shops and all that stuff. I mean, it, it is way bigger than what the original Jurassic Park is. This is a full on like a, a, a theme park with like hundreds, maybe thousands of visitors in a day. Okay, so what you can do is, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure some of you guys remember the shot from the first Jurassic Park where uh, um, uh, Sam Neill's character and the kids were running across the field with these little guys. Uh, but now you can take a tour where you can actually ride on this truck and run along or rather go along with them in this, 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 this truck. Uh, uh, I guess these guys are, are vegasauruses uh, and so that's why they're not eating them. And then you can go along for a canoe ride or a boat ride where you can uh, 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 go along this river where you see sludge and snarl in their original forms. <laughs> Stegosaurus and brontosaurus. These are, all, are also vegetosaurus because they do not eat meat. And so they're safe. Now check this out. Now here's a brand new feature. This is what they're calling the gyroscope. Now I don't exactly know how it works, but... Uh, but apparently this is like you're in a bubble, like a protected bubble, and you shouldn't be able to be eaten, okay? At least that's what I gather, because it's got to be safe, right? So it looks like this, and I'm pretty sure that because we're not seeing the, um, the wheels here, we're only seeing like a part of the, the gyroscope or gyrosphere, uh, that uh, it, it runs on, on some kind of uh, like, a, like a gyro system, right? So that the ball stays, stays, stays level, all right? And uh, they need to, 
needed to be this ball so you can see all around you, right? So, you know, it's 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 a gimmick, right? It's a gimmicky kind of thing. And then here you see it's riding along with a Brontosaurus or a Brachiosaurus. We can't really tell, but uh, this looks so very exciting. Now, something tells me that these kids are obviously going to be the kids who are in distress. These are the kids that are going to be going to be running around just like the first two kids in the first movie. And instead, it's two brothers, and obviously, you know, something happens, either the thing goes breaking down, like the, the, the gyrosphere goes breaking down, and then, you know, now they're running away from dinosaurs, alright? Now check this out. So they got this monorail system that goes across the water, and beyond that is actually like a sea world type of thing, because in the next shot, you see this great white shark, and <laughs> the great white shark is no longer the, you know, the king of the ocean. Okay, uh, it is in fact this big thing, which I have no idea what it is. But if you don't know how big a great white shark is, a great white shark is freaking huge. This thing is even bigger. Look at the size of this thing. Okay, this thing is just, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's huge. It's like a giant overgrown crocodile. And I I'm just thinking, okay, I mean, look at the, the way this, 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 um, this, uh, these bleachers are set up. I mean, this this whole audience area is set up. I'm just thinking that even if those were electric style barricade, that's not going to prevent this thing from jumping over and eating everybody. Okay, so I mean, look at the size of this thing. Everybody's all having fun. They're taking camera photos and videos, and you know they get splashed on. It's all fun and games until someone gets eaten. Okay, look how much fun they're having. <laughs> Now here's where we start getting, you know, you know, they taking the fun away from the trailer. Now here is the the menace. Okay, now first we're already treated to a very menacing shot right here, where you see, I, th I believe this is Bryce Dallas Howard's character, and she is, uh, uh, um, you know, awaiting the uh, the um, arrival of some dude who's appearing, who's coming from a helicopter. And they've mentioned that uh, in the last 10, 10 years, they've learned more about uh, stuff. Than then end up then like then all the research they've ever done in their entire lives and once again they're still using the mosquito thing you know the the mosquito um you know the the concept around how the mosquitoes have stored the the dinosaur DNA right and here are the eggs these are the eggs that they've been actually growing themselves uh, genetically and uh, Bryce Dallas Howard is talking about uh, how how the this research has been uh, is, is quite uh, phenomenal I can't remember what she said she said uh, oh. Yeah, talking about the their own little mutation, their own their 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 own creation. I mean, this uh, this shot alone already tells you that okay, this this is not a good idea. You shouldn't be making your own dinosaurs. And which which brings us to uh, 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 this shot where where Chris Pratt just tells you guys, ah, uh, yeah, I don't think this is a bad idea. I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> but Chris. Jurassic World and Jurassic Park is all about bad ideas, okay? I mean, we wouldn't have a movie without bad ideas. Without bad ideas, the, the, the entire world would be a pretty boring place to live. You gotta have bad ideas, okay? You gotta have more bad ideas than good ideas. Because, <laughs> yeah, uh, you wouldn't have a movie without a bad idea. But anyways, uh, Chris Pratt right here. What a great shot. This is a hero shot. Man, I, 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 Chris Pratt is my man crush, okay? I gotta say that Anthony Mackie and Chris Pratt are like like I'm in love with these two guys. These guys are uh, like like hot. Okay. <laughs> now they're talking about like these scratch marks that were made by some Dinobot dinosaur with uh like from you know uh like this is like a 45 foot wall or 45 meter wall. I don't know oh, 45 feet. They don't use the metric system over here. <laughs> and then Chris Pratt is looking up and look at this. Look at this shot. Like, this is a metal hard hat, and whatever this dinosaur is, yeah, he really did a number on it. And then uh, Chris Pratt is saying, evacuate. Evacuate right now. Bryce Dallas Howard looking back and saying, uh, you, you, no way. You, like, no way. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> and, you know, here, just as I predicted, the gyrosphere is not as safe as it actually is presented in the in the first half of the trailer it's not a safe thing it's it's a bad idea uh something must have torn this thing apart or crashed you know it took a huge impact and thus uh the kids are no longer in it anymore and look at this he finds the teeth that is dislodged from the mouth of something very very uh, nasty and then, okay 
this is a bit of a predictable shot. If something drips like, whether it be slime or, or blood or saliva or whatever, if something drips on you, don't look up, just run, okay? This guy looks up and now he's gonna be dead. <laughs> And now you can tell that Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard are the main characters. I mean, Chris Pratt is obviously the main character, but Bryce Dallas Howard's character, like, I'm going to say that she's meant to survive in the movie. Like, she's, she has to survive just because, uh, uh, look, they're seen standing together, right? <laughs> now, who is jumping across, I mean, like, from the waterfall? That doesn't look like the, the two characters that we just saw. These are the two kids the two kids are running away from something that's obviously chasing after them. They have no other choice but to jump off in like off this waterfall. All right, uh, you know here's the here's the uh, the shot where where uh, she goes, oh my god, and then something is running, something huge. I don't know if that's T Rex. We've seen the T Rex three times already. Could this be this like their own creation, which Chris Pratt's character called a bad? idea now look who he's chasing at Lewis who is chasing after in the far distance you can see the first kid and then you can see the brother so uh i'm pretty sure they make it out okay because there's this little 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 gap he's gonna make it okay now this shot is something uh, that tells you something about the story uh, or the movie the plot and that is there is something that needs to be done Okay, whether it's turning off the power generator or, 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 or she has the key code to open up the main door or something like that. But Chris Pratt's character needs to be somewhere else because he needs to rescue somebody else, all right? This is something we've already seen in Jurassic Park, the first movie. This is where uh, uh, Samuel Jackson's character goes off and turns off the power generator, but then ends up dead later on. This is the same situation. She has to go off alone, okay? You know, because there's only the two of them, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. So Chris Pratt has to do something heroic, like rescue kids, but he needs to rely on her to 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 turn off like the the the, the power generator, or the, the the shield generator, or something off in like the, the 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 force of Endor or something. And then, uh, but obviously, she's not gonna uh, uh, be able to do that without encountering some some dinosaurs. Okay. <laughs> And of course, with all the, the hundreds of thousands of people having fun in Jurassic World, there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people running around when the, the dinosaurs, you know, are loose. <laughs> and of course, here are the two kids running. It's the big question is, what are they running away from? And then here's the, of course, the obligatory scene where she goes, run! <laughs> and here you can see one of the kids and, you know, we've seen this type of thing before. The kid is, like, hiding. And, and we... <laughs> and guess what's going to happen? Obviously, the, the monster or the dinosaur is going to find him because you can see the shadow creeping up, you know, from the bottom of his face. And now here's something very interesting. Right here we see uh, 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 the, the, these raptors coming out of their cages. They just charge out. The next shot is Chris Pratt riding on his motorcycle. So you automatically assume that he's riding away from them. Okay, now this is where I, I, now this shot right here is where I was like, what? In my reaction video, you saw me going like, what? <laughs> well, this is the shot right here. Chris Pratt is riding along with friendlies. Okay, these raptors are friendly. Maybe they did something to the, the raptors genetically. Maybe they injected some super intelligent serum to make them more intelligent than they already are. Or Chris Pratt managed to train them. But I'm sure it's what I said before, and that is uh, they learned to make the raptors more intelligent. And you know why they did that? Because the raptors have been a threat in all three f of the first films. It's something we've seen before, all right? So the, 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 the writers, the writer of this movie obviously thought of, okay, what can we do with the raptors that we haven't seen before? Well, let's make them friendlies, okay? Let's make them, you know, the, the, the good guys, the heroes, all right? Because one thing about Jurassic World, or rather making Jurassic World, is they got to ask themselves, how can they make it different from the first three films? And what can they take from the first three films that they must absolutely put in a Jurassic Park, or yeah, Jurassic Park installment without making it seem like audiences are watching the same thing, okay? Make their own dinosaurs, make the raptors friendly, and make Jurassic Park bigger, and give them a give the audiences a reason to go back to Jurassic World. All right. So I'm done talking about all the shots, but I just got to say one thing, and that is, Jurassic Park films are all the same. 
I love dinosaurs. I love the Jurassic Park franchise. I'm very excited to see this this next installment. But Jurassic Park films are essentially all the same, just like how Transformers films are all the same. Transformers films are all about you know a big alien invasion even though age of extinction wasn't really about an invasion but it was about some kind of robot takeover okay this is the same thing every time they gotta you know this is the underlying theme and there's nothing wrong with that there's absolutely nothing wrong with that saying that they're you know these movies are all the same or is like saying like diehard films are all the same yes they're all the same they have to keep in the same theme as the original and it's all about being in the wrong place at the wrong time same thing with the with the uh, uh, uh the island Okay, uh, a Jurassic Park, right? Th there's always got to be a reason to go back to the island. It doesn't matter how stupid the reason is. There's got to be a reason, okay? And the next thing is that there's got to be somebody running around who is very, very irresponsible, thus making the hero have to look after them, okay? <laughs> look or rescue them. There's got to be that. That's what makes a Jurassic Park movie a Jurassic Park movie. Another thing that they got to have is... The, the some of those those iconic dinosaurs that that uh that that um you know uh uh that that are prevalent in these films and not only do they have to bring out these prevailing dinosaurs uh but they got to make them bigger all right so first one is the t-rex the second one was two t-rexes the third one was a spinosaurus and now this one is this genetically modified hybrid okay so so you know it's all about making these movies bigger and uh, I have no problem with that, okay? Uh, now, I've been reading the comments about this trailer, and a lot of people are saying that, that uh, oh, man, you know, can they make a Jurassic Park where the security fences or, or it's, it's actually safe to go there? Why does it keep on breaking down? Well, asking that question is kind of like asking, why do they keep on having helicarriers and, and, and aerial gunships in these, these uh, uh, Avengers films in Captain America the Winter Soldier? When all they're meant to do is explode and break down. <laughs> of course they're meant to explode and break down. That's why they're heli characters. It's, it's a bad idea to have a floating fortress. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. So anyways, I'm really excited. And I, I can't wait to watch this movie. There's going to be, of course, uh, more trailers coming out. And I'll be doing my reviews for all of that. But uh, you know what? This, this one's a long teaser. That's what it is. Because it, didn't really, it doesn't really tell you a whole lot. But it tells you enough. All right, and that's all I got to say in this video. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter, at Rage Nation. My name is Alexi. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Strikes Back, they introduced the idea of, or rather, concept of bounty hunters. And uh, with the introduction of Boba Fett and Dengar and Bosk and, 